I'll take a sip of my corporate. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeremy from Touche Amore. Um, you are the lead vocalist for the band Touche Amore. You and other bands are known for like your DIY um, sort of attribute, and I and I wanted to know like a little more about well, like why you choose that method or why people in your genre choose that method. Right. Um, first off, before before uh, the witch hunt begins with with answering this question, uh, when our band started, we we're heavily, heavily, heavily DIY. Where you know, I booked the tours, I, I everything, you know, mm. other than screening our own shirts and stuff like that, you know, like we'd go through companies for that. Um, it's really hard to be completely DIY. If you want to make a punk kid mad, explain that ICP is the most DIY band around because they do everything themselves. Mm. But um, uh, the, you know, at this point, like we have a booking agent and, and people who help us out. So it's not completely DIY anymore, but I think there kind of comes a, a point where uh, to, to sort of make it fair for everybody, you know, like kids who want to come to shows, you can't always play a DIY venue because there's not enough space maybe, you know, you get to a certain, a certain point where you just have to, to open up to things you may not have been comfortable with before. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to things like selling our own merch at, at you know, shows and stuff like that, like, I, I think that's really important because, uh, there comes this, this, uh, almost force field that gets invented in in kids' minds that, that like, you're bigger than than you actually are or something like that. Like, like kids will go to the show and not expect to see you at the merch table. You know, they just assume you're in the back hanging out, partying or something. So, you know, whatever. And, uh, and, and we'd like to just sort of, like, break down those walls, you know? Like, I, I like the idea of, of, of coming off as, as normal as everybody else, you know? Like, that's super important to all of us. I think it's important to a lot of the bands that we're all affiliated with that 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 is 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 such a strong message that like anyone can do what we're doing. Absolutely anyone can do what we're doing. So it's good to be there and like talk to people and, and just be your normal person like we are, you know. And uh, uh, you know things like that are why that sort of ethos is important, I guess. Yeah. Um, and in that similar vein, and you kind of mentioned it um, about kind of like the force field, you've explained in other interviews that you feel like working like big stadiums feels really weird to you because of that bear. Um, and you said that it is important to you like with your DIY, but like why why have you found that to be really important? Like um, did, did you feel that like when you were growing up with bands and stuff? Yeah. Okay. When, when, you know, all the bands that I would say like changed my life, uh, are all bands that I, I developed relationships with because they were just normal people, mm. you know? When some of the bands that that, that did that, like uh, I met um, Daryl from Glassjaw, the first time Glassjaw played uh, California, they were opening for the Deftones and at the Palladium. And I was like, I love the Deftones, but Glassjaw was like my new favorite band. I, I love them so much. And I so badly wanted to just tell the singer how much I appreciated what he did. So I waited in the parking lot after the show, and he came out, and I explained, you know, like how much, how much what he did, what he does means to me. And he was like, kind of taken back by it. He's like, "You just made my night. Like, what the hell, you know?" And they came on tour like two months later. They're playing at the Whiskey with uh, Earth Crisis, Strife, and Drowning Man, and uh, and. He, he, like, grabbed me from, like, I didn't even see him. He, like, grabbed me from the back. He was like, what's up, dude? And, like, from then, like, till, you know, now, like, we're we're still pals. You know, like, I, we don't speak as much as often anymore. But, um, but, like, whenever we see each other, he's still the same guy he was then. Same with all the guys on Thursday. Like, all those bands that, the first time I saw Thursday, they were at the Glass House opening for the Murder City Devils. And they were, you know, Jeff was selling, the singer was, like, selling their own merch, you know, and started a conversation, been friends since, you know. And though those bands blew up so big, they still remain the same people, and that mm. taught me a lot. That mm. that that just because something looks bigger than it is, they, it actually isn't that way. Yeah. You have mentioned that like people have approached you about your songs and like how like your songs impacted them, and like mm -hmm. they interpreted it a certain way, and it ended up like not actually like that wasn't what you intended in the lyrics. Right. Um, why do you think that is? I think that's overall the most exciting. Not all exciting slash special thing about about music in general that you can take any song and make it your own you know there's uh an example okay there's band smoking popes they're awesome amazing right they broke up for a long time the singer did a band called duval and you listen to duval 
and it sounds just like this movie pops. It's like not a lot different. No offense, Josh, whatever your name, last name is at the end. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but Duvall's great, and it's these songs that all sound like these really cutesy mixtapey love songs, right? Come to find out, it's a Christian band. They're all about God. You don't realize that because he doesn't actually say it. So when you're listening to it, you're just like, oh my God, this is going on a mixtape for my girl, right? <laughs> but it's actually all songs praising God, and you're like, whoa, okay. I found that out way later, you know, it's like, cool, you know, that's fine, like, I'm glad you, he, he chose Duvall as his outlet for, he became a born again, blah, 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 um, that kind of, that was, like, kind of a, a big one for me, where I was just like, wow, like, it's, you don't realize how you can interpret certain things, right. so, like, uh, we have a song called Home Away From Here, and for me, the song is, like, the cut and dry, where it's, like, getting used to being on the road more than being home, being on the road feeling more like home than actually being home. I have more people that I can attach myself to out here than here. You know, I've lost track of people home at home, but I know who I'm going to see the next day here and they matter to me, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, but then I'll meet somebody who has never had any interest in playing in a band, has never played in a band, can't play a musical instrument, but they're like, that song, uh, I relate to that song more than anything. And, you know, might ask why and they'll say uh i was afraid of leaving my hometown to go to college in this other state but it's my dream to go to this city and, and whatever but i've been terrified to do it but i chose to do it and it was the best thing that happened to me and now i you know blah 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 so uh reasons like that are why you know i, I feel that way i guess yeah i mean if everyone in the room is 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 getting something out then that's that's Nothing's better than that. Do you feel that you are able to fully express yourself, like, in your band? Like, do you have any other venues for that? Uh, since I was a kid, I've always been just so obsessed with the idea of playing music that I kind of just put all of it in one, I just put all my eggs in one basket right there. You know, I can't draw to save my life, so I can't do art. Uh, you know, and I'd always played in guitar, played guitar in bands, and, um, I've, I hit a peak with my talent in that, uh, which is a very low talent. Uh, many years ago, and I and all of my friends who played guitar, like much later in life, just passed me by, and I was just like, you know what? Not for me. It's fun to still play a little bit. Probably, sh probably shouldn't keep up with this. Uh, so I took my hand at singing, and, okay. and uh, I'm really happy I made the choice because it's it's been a huge, you know, weight off of me in a lot of different ways, and you know, it's exciting. And I love it. I was wondering about like moshing in terms of relieving s stress because I know like people do it at your shows like I know you've talked about like being like moshing like yeah, in your yeah. in your own time right um like do do you consider that to be like a good stress reliever uh it's as long as you're not like trying to actually hurt the person next to them. look like moshing in general is silly as hell like <laughs> you look at someone it's silly as hell uh, whatever you want to interpret as moshing, whether you're, you're push-pitting at Ozfest or you're circle-pitting at a subhuman show or you're, you know, throwing your fists at a small of a show. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to, you know, whatever. Uh, there's certain bands that, that just will bring that out of you, but, um, I think with anything, there's, there's just so many different lines of, like, appropriate and unappropriate, you know? Like, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're... Same thing with like stage diving. If you're moshing to look like the tough guy at the show, and you're and that's why you're doing it, just like the same as you're stage diving at the show to be caught on to get like your cool picture to post on your Tumblr, you know, like any of those things, shut up and get out of the show. But if you're stage diving because it, it, you just really want to sing this part and like share this moment, and, like just you're losing your mind, you're so excited. Awesome. If you're if that's how you're gonna like get out your energy for it, you know, just be aware of your surroundings. You know, okay. things happen and you can't control everything that happens. You know, but but uh, if you accidentally hit somebody, you know, to apologize and make sure they're okay. You know? <laughs> I, I, I I make the joke about coming out of mosh retirement for certain bands. You yeah, know? like there's been there's been bands like uh, we played Heavy Fest in in uh, in England a couple of years ago. And uh, I hadn't seen Strife play. I just mentioned Strife with the Glass Show. They've always been one of my favorite hardcore bands from LA. And uh, seeing them in England, and I was just like, I'm, 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 no one here knows me. I'm going to lose my mind right now. So, or like, I always make jokes that Converge is the band that no, about, no matter what will like make me lose my mind. Like, I, they're my favorite, favorite aggressive band of all time. So, you can't get help it sometimes, but <laughs> just don't be a jerk. Could have just summed it up to don't be a jerk. But that, that's good. Don't be a jerk. You're I like that. Jerk. 
Um, and I read somewhere you you describe yourself as like the dad of your band. That's because I'm the oldest. Yeah, and and so like I guess in that in being the oldest or maybe even the wisest, like how is your relationship with your band like structured? Is it very family oriented? Like how would you describe? We're it? very family oriented. I mean, there's you know there's people get picked on more than others. Just, you know all those sorts of things. Um, uh, I guess the the really like the dad of the band thing was just I had been in bands that toured before the other guys hadn't, you know, all those sorts of things, so, like, there was, in the beginning of the touring stuff, it was sort of, like, almost showing the ropes, in a way, of, like, whatever, they, I mean, it's not like they didn't get it, you know, they're all smart kids and everything like that, but, uh, you know, I think it's just a, more of an experience thing, I guess, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, no, I mean, we all get along, like, I, I don't think of them as, as younger than me, for the most part, you know, there are times when I make jokes about, I do all the night drives, because I don't sleep very well at night, so, after the show, I'm, we drive like usually three or four hours every night, stay at a, find a cheap motel, wake up, and then cut the drive in half the next mm -hmm. day because nothing sucks worse than sitting in the van for eight hours every single day. Mm -hmm. So as soon as after the show, I start driving, they all pass out. But before they pass out, they're like little kids who are just yelling in the back seat for like, like, ah, for like 15 minutes and like little kids, boom, how cold. All of them are just dead asleep after like 15 minutes. And then I just drive peacefully and it's my <laughs> favorite thing because like there's, I just can listen to my music put on something nice and mellow, just drive for three hours, have a great time. Uh, so things like that are okay. why. It sounds very similar to like a family yeah, exactly, situation. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and this one's specifically youth-based because we're very interested in like youth experience. Um, and we, I'm sure like your fan base is like a giantly wide age range, but like how do you feel about like the youth that follows bands like you? Do you like... Do you hope that you have an influence on them? Like, what would be the hope of an influence that you had on them? Um, I guess, you know, uh, one that I talked about earlier is, is is really putting it out there that, that no one is better than anybody, mm -hmm. that anyone can do what we're doing, you know? Um, that's, like, a huge thing for me. Like, we'll never play a Warped Tour, ever. And and I stand by that. I'm glad. It's, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with it being on film. I'm fine with whatever. Like, we will never play a Warped Tour because there's so much negative, misogynistic ignorance that happens at that, and mm. the saddest part is that the probably normal age range for Warped Tour is 14 to 16, mm. and they're just being just force-fed the worst shit ever, and there's, the last couple of years has been, you know, like three or four bands that we're affiliated with that have been doing it, and I'm, I, I praise them for, A, having the courage <laughs> to deal with it, but, uh, on top of that, um, uh, being there to sort of hopefully be this uh, potential, the one band that these kids maybe had never heard of that they see and they go, and it just sort of opens them up to it, you know? Um, I hope that is a thing. I personally just couldn't hang. Like, I, I, I would be too angry every single day. And also, here's like the diva side of it. You don't know what time you're playing every single day. So, like, at least once, definitely once, potentially twice a week, you, your ass has to play at 11.30 in the morning in a parking lot in the summer. Sounds terrible. Sounds terrible. <laughs> it all sounds terrible. Uh, no thanks to any of that. But above all of that, it's it's what happens every single day. And it's just a, it's just a letdown. It's a bummer. And, and uh, I think there's a lot better ways of of giving kids music in a in a... It's, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> In the same vein about youth, um, I wanted to ask, like, how you were influenced as a youth and, like, how that's affected who you are now, like, with the music scene. Music scene? Yeah. Um, I told this story recently. Like, I, I, oh, I did a podcast with my friend. But um, I was just obsessed early on with the idea of, of doing music. Uh, the, re the, the reference that I used was... Um, my first, I, I had favorite bands, like, super young, like, I, I remember where I was when Kurt Cobain was announced dead, and I was devastated, I was, I, I wouldn't get out of the car after they, like, I went to get hot dogs with the, with the family that we were, like, neighbor family, and they announced it on the air, and uh, I was, and we were at the front of Pink's Hot Dogs, and I, and they, and I wouldn't get out of the car, I was just so, so bummed. Um, so, like, Nirvana and Pearl Jam were, like, my first two favorite bands. There were things I liked, but, like, I weren't, I wasn't, like, dedicated, like, whatever. Um, but, uh, 
I remember watching the Even Flow video from Pearl Jam, which I think was in 1991. And there's a shot in the video of Eddie Vedder up on this high thing, and he and he stage dives. Like he jump, he like jumps in the crowd in like 1991. Like I had never seen anything like that, and I was just so enthralled by like the idea of of like that sort of attention almost. You know, like he's he's he's. I I, I, I realized that he had this force behind it, you know, like, whatever he's doing musically, like, whatever his words he's saying, whatever, and that all these people are down to have this guy jump on them. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what stage diving was, I didn't know whatever, but I was just like, that is the coolest thing I have ever seen, you know, and that just sort of, from there, like, you know, I just, all I ever wanted to do was play music, and, uh, and in a way, I guess, wanted that attention. Anyone who says they don't want attention who's in a band, you know, it's it's a it's a thing for attention, yeah, totally. Like it, how much of attention you want is a different thing. But but you you love that feeling, you know. Like you're you're a glutton for it. So that like got you into the music scene. Were there things that like changed you like emotionally? Like did you have like ev events that were triggered or like uh, resolved or something with bands or? Well, some. No matter what, like as you're growing up, whatever you're getting into whatever's happening in your life can can relate to that you know like went through a bad breakup right when glass shots everything you ever want to know about silence came out which is the angriest album that i've ever heard in my life still the angriest album i've ever heard today like nothing tops that record and um so that will like boom fell into place for me that's why that record meant so much to mm. me you know it, it, it's all just timing okay and what would be your first piece of advice you'd give to anyone who would express like a particular issue they're going through like a like a fan comes up to you and like uh says that they relate to a song like what advice would you give in any situation like that it all depends you know first of all i feel there's this pressure put on on whoever the lyricist in the band is uh to have answers clearly we're writing the songs we don't have answers you know like we're i'm writing about a song or we're writing certain songs because i i'm going through it you know so a lot of times i'll you can be approached by somebody who is like, you know, uh, might say something really heavy to you, like, which has happened, and, and I've had actual, like, anxiety about these situations where someone will be like, I don't know if I would be here if it wasn't for you. I don't know, it, you know, things like, like, if it wasn't for this record, you know, like, I probably wouldn't be here tonight. Things, and you're just like, I don't know how to respond to that. You know, like, that's so heavy. Like, that is such an intense thing to say. Um, so, but the point is, like, if I'm writing the songs, like, I don't have the answers. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm just venting, you know? Like, mm -hmm. everyone should find a way to vent, you know? I'll do my best to be kind and, and talk to someone about whatever, but but uh, I had a serious, like, freaked outness about this for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up going to, to certain friends and bands that are older, wiser, you know, like, to hear what they've gone through before. Like, I talked to, uh, uh, Jeff from Thursday, and he told me a story where he actually had a parent somehow got his phone number, called him, and said, you need to convince my son not to kill himself. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not a therapist, you know, like, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a therapist, you know, like, that's, that's so much responsibility to put on somebody, you know, and that stuff, stuff is terrifying, you know, it, it's truthfully terrifying. Um, uh, Chris number two, who's an anti-flag, uh, he's one of the best dudes in the world, but one night he and I went off and, and we're talking about something. We uh, were on tour with his other band, White Wives, and, um, and, uh, and he said something that really sort of grounded me a bit, where he was like, look, don't discount anyone who says anything to you ever. Don't, you know, like, they could be very genuine. But keep in mind that sometimes people will say something to you so that they'll be remembered in a way. You know, like, they might say something really heavy to you so that you now, like, that person now sticks out in your mind. They probably, they, there's a chance they don't mean it. You know, like, they might just be, you know, a really big fan or, or whatever, if you want to use that term, fan. Um, they might just, whatever, and, and they want to have this connection with you, and they're not realizing they're doing it in a really terrifying way, you know? Um, so he's like, I'm not saying to discount everything everyone's saying, but just keep that in mind to not let it fuck you up, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. um, which really, really was the best advice that I really got. Mm. Um, but it's one of the things where it's hard to have a, a complete thought on it because 
you're thankful you can help anybody, you know, and you're thankful that anyone's listening, period. But there's a, you know, there's a responsibility that comes with it too that you don't realize when you're starting a band, you know, like I started a band with some of my friends, you know, we clearly started a band with some of our friends that we never thought would go outside playing a house show in Pasadena. And now, you know, we've got to do things beyond any of our wildest dreams. And we're thankful for all of that, but there's a responsibility that comes with it that you sort of feel you have to, you know, get back, but you're just like, I don't have answers. Like, I don't know what to say and what to do. So mm -hmm. there's, it's a weird divide, it's a weird dividing line. And then there's different things with, with, uh, with privacy too, you know, like, uh, a kid recently somehow got my home phone number and called and talked to my mom on the phone and yeah, and convinced, uh, and my mom doesn't know any better. You know, my mom, my mom's the sweetest woman in the world. So she's like, she's like, so-and-so called for you and um, said he's mailing you something. And I'm just like, what? So I called the kid back and was like, do I know you? And he's like, no, no. I'm like, you realize it's kind of creepy, right? Like, it's like, I, I tried by, I didn't want to be a complete and total asshole, but it's like, that, that's just like, it's, you know, so you never know who's, who's listening to. So there's like, yeah. there's so, so many different things to, to deal with, but, um. That's an interesting perspective because I don't think many, f like, fans or anybody who, like, listens to, like, bands, like, realizes, like, how they could be affecting, like, the people that they look up to. Absolutely. <laughs> That's Absolutely. so funny. Absolutely. I'd never even consider that. That's a interesting perspective. Yeah. Um. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. that. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> uh, would you describe yourself as straight edge? I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah, okay. Would you describe, like, a sort of, like, belonging that's associated with that label? Is that uh, why you chose it? You know, if I catch shit for, the, for saying this, I don't, I don't even care because it's my life. But I, I couldn't care less about straight edge as I'm 30 years old. Like, I'm straight edge because it's what I do. I don't, I don't consider, like, it's, it's not a label to me. It's, it's who I am, you know? When you're young, you're like, fuck yeah, straight edge, like, meh. But it's... It, why? Like, who cares? You know, I, I, I found Straight Edge through, through, uh, the band Earth Crisis. Most people found it through, you know, things like Minor Threat and, and whatever. I found Minor Threat shortly after, once you did the research. But, like, I was a fucking metal kid. Like, all I gave a shit about was metal for a period of my life. For, like, Sepultura, you know, uh, Metallica, obviously, Slayer, uh, Fear Factory, all of that, like, 90s, but, or obviously I know that Slayer and Metallica, but you know, like it was, I was, I carried in the '90s like a lot, and uh, so there, I got the Odds Fest '96 compilation that had Earth Crisis on it, and I was like, what is this shit? And I, I had the VHS, and uh, I watched it, and was just like, this is heavier than anything on here, and it's more abrasive than anything on here, and they have X's on their hands. I didn't think about it, but I was like, well, oh, whatever. So I bought that band CD, read into it. Uh, it was the Gamora Season Ends album, and. Um, and realized, I was like, wow, this is literally exactly who I am. Like, my best friend at the time and I, uh, he's like still like one of my brothers to me. But, like, he and I were both like, we don't want to, we've never wanted to drink. Not for any reason other than just, like, parents ask us not to. And I don't really want to, my parents don't give me a reason to, to disobey them. I don't have an interest in it. And that's about the time when, you know, it was like, uh, I was going into freshman year. And that's about the time when everyone starts, like, stealing their parents' alcohol or smoking their parents' cigarettes or, or whatever. And uh, I just, it never appealed to me, you know, it just never interested me. So I all of a sudden I saw this outlet of like, oh wait, I can be something and still be into this aggressive music and like, it's, it's got this world and then I found the world and I, it, that's what sort of opened me to just kind of hardcore in general. So when I found Straight Edge, I was like a metal kid. I didn't know any, I didn't know any better. Uh, and I didn't become like a hardcore kid for like at least two more years, you know, so... I didn't have any straight edge friends. I didn't meet another straight edge kid until I was 18 years old, and I was claimed when I was 14, or something like that, or 17. Is you were what when you were 14? I just claimed straight edge when I was 14. Oh, you years old. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm 30 now, so it's been like 16 years, and I just that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't give a fuck about it. Like, I, it's just who I am. Like, I, the only way you would ever know I'm straight if I'm straight edge is if you ask me. You know, I, right. I haven't worn a t-shirt. Like, if, if I found like a really good, like, <laughs> a really good like older band shirt that that. It was straight as I, I, I would I might wear that, but I wouldn't wear like a shirt that just says like drug free. Like I had that hoodie when I was like seventeen <laughs> or whatever, you know. Like I just don't care. And uh, there's an over my dead body song, which is a, a straight edge band from San Diego. They're one of my old favorite straight edge bands. Um, 
that has a line, those who scream the loudest are the first to fucking go, which is the best line that describes mm. everything that has to do with that. Like, mm. kids who get X's tattooed on their hand or on their neck or on their whatever and, you know, will be abrasive about it or, like, beat somebody up or whatever. Two years from now, won't be straight edge. You know? Like, I... I know more people with straight edge tattoos that have broken straight edge than people with straight edge tattoos that are still edge. You know, like mm-hmm. it's 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 quite funny. Yeah. So I think if anyone is the extreme of anything, it's the first sign of their downfall eventually. Glad I am, but don't care. Right, <laughs> just who I am. Um, we're interested in like your personal experiences with mental health, um, mm-hmm. and like how either your band or bands in general might affect that. Um, but specifically, like any experiences you've had with mental health. Me, you know, I've I've never gone to see anybody about anything. You know, like, I think most people struggle with depression at least at one point in their life. And, um, you know, like, I've never been diagnosed with anything. But, you know, you it, WebMD is the ultimate first and last resort to making yourself terrified, period, about anything. You're like, oh, my foot itches. I, you know, I have cancer. You know, whatever. But, uh... You know, you read. I've, I'm an insomniac. I don't sleep well ever, and and I usually have to take something to help me sleep. But I've never been prescribed anything heavy because I've never gone to anybody about it. You know, I just it's one of those things where I just never really wanted to hear the words. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, that or just I don't have health insurance, so there's also that. I know there's there's something in my history that 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 deals. There's definitely I could have been you know, diagnosed with something, and I, there probably still is today, but, you know, I, I feel there's a way to overcome it without having to talk to somebody even, you know, like, people never really talk about that, but, because it sounds like the worst advice you can give, like, ah, you don't have to talk to anybody, or like, you don't have to go see anybody, but I think if you surround yourself with, as corny and as obvious and cliche as it sounds, like, if you find things to make your life more positive, it'll just help you, you know, like, I, I've been lucky enough to find things that, that really make me happy, and I still might not sleep that well at night, but I'm at least getting through my days with a bigger smile on my face. So, like, you haven't gone to, like, a professional, <laughs> yeah. but you've gone to, like, people, because you have right. people. Right, right, right. Okay, right, right. so, like, you you would argue, like, you've found, like, enough, like, not only activities that make you happy, like singing, but there are other people yeah, that yeah, like yeah, to yeah. benefit you, you as well. Yeah, finding anyone that, that you know, it could be a parent or it could be, you know, it, it, a teacher, it could be anybody, you know, anyone who you feel has sage advice, like, by all means, ask them if you're, you know, if you're comfortable enough okay. about anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt. It's, anyone who has, who you feel has any sort of frame of reference to what you could be going through is, is, is the first person I would say, yeah, go talk to that guy, you know? And this is my last question, and it's very open-ended, um, but if we were to describe you as a pathfinder, what would you consider yourself a pathfinder of? Um, using, okay, so, uh, I wouldn't mind being a torchbearer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For, for showing that, that, as I've discussed earlier, that, that, you don't have to, to, basically anyone can do anything, like, overall, you know, like, you don't, you don't have to be raised a certain way, you don't have to be this, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be a rich kid, you don't have to be a poor kid, you don't have to be anything, that anyone can do anything you want, and especially when it comes to this genre of music, I mean, we all, for the most part, yell, it's the least talented thing you can do, you know, like, it, you, we yell because we can't sing. You know, that's that's the most part. Most people yell because they can't sing. There's certain people who can do both, and I'm jealous. But, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I'd like to, I'd like to just spend a lot of, if I can put out any message throughout, you know, whatever my band's career is, is that, is, is that, you know, anyone, just do, do what you want to do with anything, whether it's, it's art, writing, and whatever you want to do that that don't let anyone hold you back you know and and i think that our band is complete proof of that if all you ever want to do is start a band start a band it's not it's it's really not hard just find people you trust and uh people that are willing to get smelly with you in the band and uh be ready to sleep on a lot of floors and um 
come and then have some of the funniest stories you've ever had in your entire life happen. Uh, because people who are going to hold you back are probably people who also had dreams but then didn't follow them, and they're bitter about it. So that's that's the best answer I can give, probably. Sounds fair. <laughs> okay. Opportunity sound like a good word. Opportunity. I'm the pathfinder of opportunity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. That's a good answer. That's good. I like it. Awesome. First show in Italy. You know your name <laughs> means nothing. <laughs> Where? Like it's, it's two languages. So the first.